Getting started with Logic Remote for iPad. Logic Remote requires an iOS device running iOS 14 or later, which includes the iPhone 6S, the iPod Touch 7th generation, as well as iPads released in 2014 or later, such as the iPad Air 2 and the iPad Mini 4, and it also works with all iPad Pro models. You'll need to connect to a Mac running Logic Pro 10.3 or later, or GarageBand 10.2 or later. Within Logic Remote, in the upper left of the app, there's an options panel, and when I expand that, it shows me the various tools I have available to me, like the mixer, the step sequencer, and the smart controls. I've got a synthesizer loaded here, and I'm gonna do what all tutorials do, and that's play with the cutoff knob. So you can use a mouse, you can use the Apple Pencil, or you can use your fingers. If you click and drag along the keys while you're playing, you get the keys step from one to another with fresh attack. And if you see just above the keyboard, I get this panel glissando. If I give that a swipe and move over to pitch, it operates more like a pitch wheel on a MIDI controller. Okay, well, this is all a bit noisy. Uh, let's mellow this out a bit. I'm gonna add a new software instrument here in Logic. And I can navigate up to the library browser here, expand that, and now I can navigate all of the presets that are installed on my system. Doing this with my mouse and mouse wheel. I could also use multi-touch. I'm gonna go keyboards, and I like 80s chime vibe. I'm going to close the browser panel because I don't need it. That's nice. This is straightforward. I can tap out a pattern here on the keys. Um, it's a little bit difficult on the screen size. I can change the width of the keys to make it a little bit easier. But there's something really cool that's in Logic Remote, and that's the chords panel. So if I go back to my options panel in the upper left and move to chord strips, I can tap out here rather than trying to use the keyboard. I like that. That's a, a little new wave sounding. Now, the lower I click on these chords, the lower the pitch. And the higher, the higher the pitch. Holding my finger sustains. Likewise, there's a sustain switch over here that I have to click and drag to activate, and that functions like a sustain pedal. And that's the chords panel. I'm gonna add another software instrument and use my browser to pick up what I'm looking for, I want to add a bass guitar. I'm going to use this preset, Stinger Bass. Now, I don't really like chords view for a bass guitar. I mean, it works. Um, if you know your root note, it can be an effective way to, to add some octaves or something. But I'm going to step into Smart Controls and Fretboard. And this makes more sense for my bass playing brain. Well, to go with my keys, I'm going to play with the step sequencer. I think that's going to be an easier way to come up with a bass line. So back into the options panel, I'm going to check out step sequencer. And I think I started that riff in C. So I'm just add a few notes here. Adding or removing notes. Um, this is really quick. Using the step sequencer here on the iPad, it's really fast compared to mousing around a piano roll like I'm used to. And if I twirl open this expand icon here, you see we got more controls like velocity. If I kind of want to have pumping up. Very quick and faster than using a mouse and a piano roll. I'm going to go back to chords view here. 
I've got my 80s chime back up. I've already put together a beat. I used the step sequencer. And uh, let's take a look at this, see how it works for live performance. And Logic Remote has even more tricks up its sleeve remix effects. I give this a loop, move over into the mixer, and then move over here to the effects panel. And I can do some gate and cutoff effects. And that's Logic Remote for iPad. You can see everything we've done here, you can just as well do in Logic with a keyboard and mouse or a MIDI controller, but the iPad just brings a completely different UI to the experience. I really like the chords view as well as the step sequencer. I find that these are things to help me when I've maybe got some writer's block and I just want a different way to kind of jam out with my software. Now it's worth noting Logic Remote only controls Logic running on a Mac. This isn't a standalone application. Logic Remote does nothing unless it's paired with a Mac. That being said, it could be a great tool to incorporate into your workflow. It works on a very wide range of iOS devices, including older iPads. And if you've got an older iPad kicking around the studio, you can throw one up on a music stand and just have it up at your desk as a convenient way to work quickly. How do you use Logic Remote? Are there any features you wish it had? Let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear about it. I'm Arthur Dittner.